It looks so weird. I mean, I've never seen an Okanagana like this before. This, this genus, Okanagana, most of the cicadas are largely black in coloration, and then they'll have paler markings on the abdomen and a little bit on the thorax, but those are usually more orange or red or yellow. And we'd never seen one that had it just be all white like that before. And so it was, you know, immediately very striking from those photos. The first picture I took was in 1982. There was one molting, so it was this vivid blue, almost turquoise blue, before they harden and become black and translucent. But I didn't even know what it was for decades, um, maybe, yeah, a couple decades. So they came to me, <laughs> I, I searched for them. But anyway, so I posted one on iNaturalist probably in 2000. 16 or something. It looked like someone had taken a Xerox photo of a Okanagana. Just weird in pretty much all respects. This particular species actually calls at around 150 syllables per second. So when you hear that, its individual notes are actually 150 per second. And it puts it in this weird little acoustic niche. We could see evidence going back probably many years of signs of the little egg nests on the azaleas. That makes us think that that's the only plant that they're using. And that plant is pretty strongly limited to these sort of serpentine habitats, given that the, the nearest other large serpentine habitats are going to be many dozens of kilometers away. It's not really possible for the cicadas to be able to travel that sort of distance. That's at least the hypothesis that we have for why no one's ever found it anywhere else. But we are looking. I've been checking out some other areas with large serpentine outcroppings just to do the due diligence as it stands if this is the only place you can find it we want to be sure that you know just like the the plants it's it's got some good protections on it and we can keep the habitat in, in good shape